Was that your Jared, dog? Yeah, he's right here. My wife was letting him out. Thanks, baby. All right, man. Ready to kick it off when you are? It's already been started, fool. We were talking no. for a minute already on, on air. You were you people saw me pet my dog. Yeah, your dog. What up, everybody? Hey man, welcome to Omni Bros Live. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this is the Wednesday. I'm sorry, it's not Wednesday. We're talking something else revolving around Wednesday. I'm sorry. Uh, there's a special announcement later about a Wednesday, much later. But this is the Monday episode. This is Halls, Reads, and what's coming out this week. And this week, you have myself, Gabe Infinity Watch. I'm hosting this motherfucker tonight. And along with me is one of my favorite motherfuckers, and that's my boy, Omar. Omar, say what's up, man. What's up, man? Yeah, you did it. Good job. <laughs> what you now, what's going to, on, man? everybody? Uh, not a lot. Not a lot. Just got back from a uh, camp out last uh, week. We ended it early because we got this huge like snowstorm. So that's that's really about it. Then I've been reading comic books and trying to do some stuff on my channel. And now I'm here with Gabe talking about books that are coming out this week and what we'll be picking up. Yeah, so. man, I saw uh, that you did a Conan review. I think everybody did a Conan Omnibus review except me, and I'm usually the one that does that shit first. Uh, you're usually the first one to get it, so that's not fair. You're, it's fair. You, you have it on Tuesday when you could take. But I think I think your forte is always Fantastic Four, right? That's mainly your thing. And uh, yeah, I wanted to do Conan. I was ready for it. I just been just I just been so many other things. I've been that I've been utilizing my extra time with. I had a chance to do the video today. My kids are hey, off school. Don't. My wife uh, is off are... of work. People are saying they don't see you. They don't see me. Oh, nope. shit. What did you do? Come on, Jess. Come on. Seriously, that, this is Jess somehow like, possessing this and making us worse or something? That's right. I, I, had you so. on, I had you highlight it earlier. Lionheart, it's only talking. three degrees where I am at. My God. Dude, it was like the wind chill was horrible. Like, it wasn't that bad. It was like probably seven degrees. The wind chill was like negative something. So fuck that noise. I my brown ass is not made for that kind of weather. So no way, man. We're from the south. The so, south, uh, south. Uh uh. Yeah, and you're even souther than most. Uh, south America. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So, so there you uh, go. There's everybody. There we are. Yeah, I'm back up now. We're all together. So real quick, let's go ahead and and plug our amazing sponsor, the one and only, the best place on the internet to get. Super affordable omnibuses, hardcovers, trade paperbacks, and that is our great friends at Instock Trades. InStockTrades.com is the site you want to go to every week, every day, every chance that you want to save money on your comics. Uh, free shipping in the US for orders over 50 bucks. You get great, wonderful customer service through them. I forget how the rest of the ad goes. But I think we'll just talk about them. Honestly, I've been using them and their parent company for probably 13 years. Uh, I've been a fan of them since before the show. I'll be a fan of this of them after this show. And I'm sure Omar feels the same way. So next time you're looking for any new or upcoming omnibuses, hardcovers, and trade paperbacks, you want to point that browser over to instocktrades.com, bookmark it be there Tuesday afternoons for new releases as well. No no jingle? Jess always does a jingle. Uh, well, he's that's got, Jess. <laughs> he's the one that's got the hook. So that is yeah. a question. Where is Jess? Jess is out tonight. Um, not sure what he was doing. He's taking a personal day. He's I ice think, fishing, he told me. Ice fishing. Ice yeah, fishing. I don't like ever see drill a hole my ass doing ice. That's like something I thought old men did. Like I always think well, of like – there you go. Grumpy old man and grumpier old man. That's a, that's what they do. I'm sure it's fun, actually. I can kind of see myself doing it in that. Well, I mean, I don't think it's that cold because I'm sure anybody else besides Jess would be out there with a nice big bottle of whiskey to keep themselves kind of toasty. Yeah, yeah. So he doesn't drink. So maybe it's coffee and hot root beer, if that's a thing. That's gross. That's almost like bourbon and cranberry juice. Oh, my God. Yes, I do. Derek, the diverse collector. I love Peru. I still do, even though they always get their asses kicked and not, never make it even to the first draft of the World Cup. But got to represent, man. I still Soccer's love them, man. Gross. 
you're an idiot. I don't even watch That's much sports. Football. <laughs> yeah. It's that is football. Shut up. No way, man. Just in his favorite team, the Rams, I guess something happened and they Well, I really thought that's what he was out doing today. He was celebrating the Rams win. Like I thought he was going out somewhere. <laughs> and it's the one time a year he's allowed to drink. It's giving him a cheat day. <laughs> a cheat day where you can just start just boozing it up and go crazy. Doesn't count. Yeah, it doesn't count. You don't start over. <laughs> oh, so one more thing. Speaking of uh, boozing it up and going crazy, uh if for so anybody out there watching if you're going to Chicago this year for C2E2, uh, there's a couple Omni Bros are going to be there this year. And that's actually yep. the two Omni Bros on tonight. Omar and myself will be at C2E2. Yep. This Dave year. and I were just talking about it just a few minutes ago in the yeah, chat. Yeah, we just figured it out. You were like, hey, I'm going to Chicago with, with Amanda and maybe some other people. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to be there too with Torpedo. So, yeah, um, that's what's up. Well, I'm, I'm trying to see if Jess will go. I was like, take your wife. And your daughter, and you know, let them roam the city because Chicago's nice. There's a lot of things to do. Then yeah. you can come. You can come to the C2E2. Go see Jason Aaron and the cast. We should, of... we should do this. Oh no, I'm sorry. Continue. I got an idea though. No, that was it. <laughs> okay, we should uh, do like a like a legit meetup. I'm assuming you're going to have a hotel room. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Maybe I'm... to yourself, or are you going to share it with somebody? I'll probably share it with people yeah 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 we should get a good hotel room like a suite and have like a party in there dude you're the one that works for torpedo you should have the good hotel room yeah i probably will but i'll probably have like five other people in it though that's fine like they pack us in there it's the guy the owner ever go the guy from system of the down he's always there yeah so you'll be able to meet him but he, he works the booth he'll sell comics to you and talk to you and like he's fairly a normal guy or a regular dude other than the fact that He's rock god and super famous and whatnot. But he's basically a regular dude. Isn't uh and he'll, he's like best friends with Jim Lee? Lee. He's best friends with like Jim Lee, right? Yeah, him and Jim Lee are le legitimately BFFs. They're each other's uh godparents to each other's kids. They're each other's best man. So Jim Lee oh, probably hang out at the booth for a little bit. He usually does. That is that is what's up, man. <laughs> that's, that's what it's what all the, about. That's what that's, that's the life. Stuff. To be best friends with Jim Lee and Jim Lee draws on your drums and your kids and gives like your kids their first tattoos. That's what's up. That'd be uh, sweet. Yeah, so, we'll yeah figure, if we'll anybody's going to Chicago, that detail. anybody going to Chicago, man, yeah, hit us up. Uh I think we should do some kind of party meetup with uh fellow Omni bros out there. Um and see what happens. See what kind of I debauchery we can fall into. Absolutely. The closer it gets, we'll, the more we'll talk about it. So yeah, because I literally just came up with this idea while we were yeah. talking. <laughs> C2E2 when, Lionheart is March the 20, of March, March twenty second to the twenty fourth, I believe. It's we it's that weekend. It's like Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah, it's a good show. They used to focus a lot more on comic books, but it looks like now they're they're starting to trend more to what other conventions are doing, which is having Bullshit. you know. Well, TV shows, movie stars, and things like that. Not 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 that many wrestlers, thank God. I don't know about porn stars, but mainly it's it, they used to focus mainly on comic book writers and artists. So, and I'm thinking about heading up to the Knoxville show too. Um, so, right on. So I'll, I'll be at C2E2, and then the next week, March is a crazy week for for conventions. There's like literally three conventions back to back to back. I'll be at C2E2, and then a week after that, I'll be in Anaheim for Wonder for WonderCon. Oh, I've been, that, I've so. been to WonderCon before. That's a fun show. It's great. I'm I'm half tempted to stay an extra day and just go to Disneyland that Monday because Disneyland is across the street. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah. God, I haven't been to that show in forever. That, um, I'm trying to do three or, three or four shows this year. Mm -hmm. So I know where damn Jess isn't here, but I'm trying to go to one of the BotCon, the TFCon, I think it's what it's called, or HasCon. Do the one that's in Vegas. Is that uh, ToyCon or that's TF? No, um, that's I think that might be TF, and I don't know when that is. And one of my co-hosts, Dan, wants to go, so we'll try to work that out. All right, so yeah, Gabe, let's uh let's look at the solicitations. You want to uh, do solicitations are... first? Yeah, let's do that, and I'll give you the quick rundown on what is on sale. All right, everybody, give me a second here. Go ahead and share your screen and right, I'll give pull me a up second. the list. And I host this on two different like browsers for some reason. It's a pain in the butt to kind of get across everything. Where's that? That is me. And that's Vertigo. And here we go. 
All right, is it showing the uh, the preview screen? Omar? Anybody? Yes, it is now. Okay. It took a second. Right. Cool, cool. All right, so here we go. Here is what's coming out this Wednesday, January 23rd, from your favorite publisher. Starting off at Image, this is a book that people were asking us about. Battle Pug, the Compugdium. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm curious about that one, so I think I'm picking that up. Yeah, I just like the idea of it just being this big, cute pug with a Conan type character. It, it's writing. too ridiculous not to pick up, and yeah, you know, for thirty five dollars, like I think there's yeah five volumes. It's the entire set. Like that's it's insane. Of, yeah, that's a lot of content. There. And Mike Norton's a wonderful artist. He does a uh, he does a web comic called Little Donnie, mm -hmm. and it's about a uh, it's about uh, Trump. So, I've never heard of that. Okay. Yeah. I just, somebody pointed that out to me earlier today. And I was like, that's cool. All right. So uh, after that, we have Coyotes, Trade Paperback Volume 2. Uh, that's how our families came into this country. Not that kids, is, not really. Je Jess is all over that, I think. <laughs> all over the Coyotes uh, trade. Yeah. Oh, don't forget to highlight yourself, by the way, so I don't go back and forth. So we can just look at the books. God damn it. Give me a second. Uh huh. Always have to, well, I used to remind Jess, but now he's got it all figured out. Yeah, this is this is just as usual forte. Infinite loop. All right. So after coyotes, we have uh, Proxmia Centuria. Centuria. I have no idea how to say these words. <laughs> I love that artwork. I've never heard of this. For the, get a close -up of this. All those oh. uh, image books are 42% off this week at InStockTrades.com. Oh, it's Pharaoh Dunripple. He's doing the art. I love that guy's work. He did some yeah. great stuff on the Profit. Oh, okay. Back. I don't yeah. know. I just I really like the character designs and the look of that book. So that it looks, looks interesting. I'm willing to check that out. Stretch for 16, 17 bucks. I'll give it a I'll give it a flip through at the shop. All right, and then we're going to go into Dark Horse. Uh, I have no idea what is Dragon Ropa. Dragon Ropa? That's uh, based on a video game. Like a, I'm sorry, like a like a animated video game. So All right, not, moving on to something you. not as gross is uh, Empowered. <laughs> also and, based on anime. That is Adam Warren's run. Yep, this is about a girl who has superpowers that are based upon her clothing, and as her clothing gets ripped, her uh, powers start doing the so, way. So the guy behind that, Adam Warren, he was a huge fan of anime and is one of the very first people that did, I guess, what is known as like American manga. Like um, brought over, what the hell was the name of that? Antarctic Press. Like they started doing things over there with Fred Perry and then eventually Dark Horse got, got I think that's who owned the rights to Dark for the longest time was empowered and I think they still do but that hardcover I think is out of print the very the the volumes the collections yeah I think so I remember those things when they were coming out they're uh they're not oversized they're just regular size hardcover but they were thick like there was a lot of content in those I remember yeah they are huge that's right yep. Polar. Uh, Polar hardcover I have no idea what this is I don't either problem of Susan and other stories yeah. I like that title. Um, but IDW has got some Mickey Mouse stuff. All of that stuff will be 42% off at in stock trades, it looks like. All right. So, DC Comics, we have the absolute flashpoint. The very first cover. book that is 50% off, $37.50 at in stock trades tomorrow. Um, if you want to see what this book looks like, the uh, our boy, the deluxe hardcover, he has his own YouTube channel. He did an overview of it. And as much as I love doing overviews, that guy puts me to shame. He is amazing at what he does. Yeah, he does and a it, lot of work on that. It, on that work. It's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair how talented and the equipment that he has. But, hey, whatever. If you want to see it, you want to be sold on it, because I was almost like, ah, I don't want to wait two more years for, like, a Flashpoint omnibus, but I know it's going to come. Well, yeah, and that's the thing is the, the hardcover for this has been out of print for, for a while and was going has for a it? little bit of money at one point. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, but this is just a miniseries. That's all it is. It doesn't collect yeah. anything else. I want the other world stuff that yeah, I enjoyed. Yeah, this is just issue it. one through five. That's what I wanted to bring up. Just that five-issue miniseries. 
for an absolute, you know, it, it's really going to be dependent upon somebody's, you know, take on what they want out of an absolute. But it seems like DC, the last few absolutes have been kind of just whatever. Like it's been just short, short stories and stuff like that. So Nick Schmidt's uh, asking a good question. Like, should mm -hmm. I hold off on the absolute flashpoint in hopes for a nominee with all the tie-ins? Uh, so it's kind of a two two part answer. One, if you, I, I say if you're a fan of Andy Kubert's art, or if this is one of your absolute favorite stories, go for it. There's no reason in in by like no reason not to get this. Uh, but two, if you want the complete stories with like the Brian Azzarello Batman story, which is one of my favorite things he did. Yeah. Uh, the Superman stuff, all that other stuff. You, we know there's going to be an omnibus. Unfortunately, probably not until 2020 when they celebrate what their – is it the fifth year? Good Lord, I feel old. It would be five year, like a fifth year anniversary or something like that, a flashpoint. That's probably we'll see, when we'll get it. That's, that's never really the point or like an actual like thing that happens every single time. It's not always an anniversary. Or well, uh, the reason but. I say that is because of the recent Final Crisis that they've had. Mm -hmm. the ten I, that that horrible ten year banner around the cover. There was another book just recently too that an omnibus that had a ten year banner on it. Final but crisis. It, yeah, that, well, that's the one I was talking about. Oh, they mean the, the infinite crisis. Oh. There was another one too that had like a ten year anniversary. I'm not a fan of those, but if it means I'm going to get a collection with everything in it, I'm willing to wait. Besides, I have a bunch of books to read, so that's the way I feel <laughs> about it. I, I'd say this. I think this. These these five issues are pretty self contained, and you'll, you'll get a pretty decent story out of it. If um, and honestly, I don't think there's really not very often do absolutes go out of print, and not very often does anything DC really go out of print and stay out of print for a long long time. Yeah. So I would say you can wait if you absolutely want the um, the omnibus. I'm not a big fan of a lot of those other satellite storylines that were going on around the time of flashpoints most of them just made no sense and really had nothing to do with the ongoing story outside of something like you said before that azarello rizzo 100 bullets team that did that batman storyline is, is well that's the one beautiful. that comes to mind the one the wonder yeah. woman was pretty good too but i mean well, if yeah, that, it was that and like the aquaman that they're fighting like that that, that held a big part of the storyline um but project superman was just kind of whatever uh, I can't forget. I can't remember all the other stuff, but a lot of stuff to me didn't stand out where I would want to read an omnibus full of that stuff. So I'd probably pick this up, but I'd pick it up probably about a little bit later because it's it's just Flashpoint. Yeah, I'm a completist, so I like to have it all in one. And, and I like absolutes more. Sh <laughs> shout out to our boy Brooks, who's in the chat right now. Brooks oh. is the unsung hero. He is the guy that puts all the solicitations together in the Facebook group. He's the one that does the fishing. He's the true ice fisherman, not Jess. He goes fishing for all these books that are coming and makes – every time I see a, a post from Brooks makes me happy. Yeah, Even I mean, it popped it, up on my on my phone. Like, I get a notification that, that Brooks posted on the group. I always click on it to make sure you know it's not some – because I don't want to miss out on something because Brooks, yeah, you are correct. He 100% is the guy who – kind of feeds and fuels the the group when it comes down to solicitations, what's coming out. Because that's what we get excited deals. about. Oh, we yeah. get excited about upcoming books. I've can I have canceled the conference call just to read over like as he's posting. I'm like, oh man, keep him coming. I sure I sound I sound like one of those <laughs> the guy in pulp fiction. Oh yeah, keep going, Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a weird analogy. Sorry, Brooks. But anyway, uh thank you. Thank you for all the hard work you do, brother. Yeah, man, and I uh, um, hope you're having a great time with the new baby. He still has time to do it, man. I know. It's crazy. Yeah, it's good because I don't I, I don't have time to do that kind of stuff. That's a lot of work to dedicate to the group. But moving on, let's talk about uh, Batman, Brave, and the Bold Bronze Age on the bus volume two. This is a trade paperback. We need to point that out. Oh, uh, yep. It's <laughs> odd for an omnibus to, you know. Was there a was there a hardcover of this? I don't I don't keep up. Yeah, with this yeah. Stuff. This is this is the stuff that's come out in hardcover before. I think. All right. Jess, Jess is collecting these. Um. Yeah, this is a pass for me. But hey, that's awesome that they keep going with these series for people that still want them. Because if you want it, you want it for cheap. You know, thirty five bucks is is not bad. And then half. What's the discount on this? Forty two percent off. All right. So that's still that's still a pretty good price. Um, and another book that was a hardcover now becoming a trade is Dark Knight's Metal. 
Now, weren't we, we hinted did. at an omnibus of this stuff at one time? I think it was either Snyder or Capullo, or maybe both of them. I guess at a convention, slipped let slipped at an omnibus is coming out of everything. I hope they're right. Uh, this is also forty two percent off. All right, here's some good stuff here. You can't go Elliot. wrong with any uh, Keith Giffen stuff, especially when it comes down to Lobo. No, that's so we got not... a cool Lobo trade coming out this week, and Alan Grant. That is fifty percent off at In Stock Trade, so it'll be twelve dollars and forty nine cents. I love that run. And if you're a geek, wimp, dweeb, or a weenie, uh, this book is not for you. Yeah, it's definitely has some uh, adult material, I guess, in it. Oh, they got the uh, Authority Lobo. One shot in here. That's pretty dope. All right, then we got Nightwing Rebirth Deluxe Hardcover Volume Three. This is a really good series, but it just doesn't seem to really like, like in my circle, it just doesn't seem to move that well. And then we have a 30th anniversary of Sandman Volume 4, Seasons of Mist. I don't know. Why don't they just leave that book in print forever instead of reprinting it like with a new cover? It's, it's crazy. I love Sandman, but God bless. There's other things that need to be printed. <laughs> the, I mean, the book is evergreen, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter yeah, what edition you get. It's always, you're going to always have a way to collect it. Um, so uh, back in the day, speaking of, of, of Sandman, back in the day, uh, like, kind of like in the infancy of, of the Sandman series coming out and Wizard Magazine was out. And of course, Wizard was a lot more centric on the superhero you know, era of, of comics. But at that time, Sleepwalker was starting its own series. And there was an article in there that I read, and I saw this also on the Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube channel, that... They refer to Sandman. Oh, I'm sorry. They refer to uh, Sleepwalker as Sandman done right. <laughs> was the exact quote. That's, quote from that's that. ridiculous. <laughs> it's, it's, it's insane. And no, well, look, look who kind of came on top of that though. So, yeah, this uh, dude. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you know, to each their own though. I'm sure there are people out there that prefer Sleepwalker over Sandman. Yeah, and I'm sure that one person is really excited with his uh, Sandman collection or his uh, Sleepwalker collection. <laughs> Which is sad because I, I dug some of that Sleepwalker stuff. But anyway, whatever. It's not terrible, but it's 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 definitely not Sandman. So, All right, so let's uh, keep it going because we got Ben Riley Scarlet Spider Tree Paperback Volume 5. Jesus, I, I, I forgot how long that series went for. Five volumes. It, that's, a good, that, that's a good series, though. That By the way, that is 50% mm -hmm. off. At in stock trade, so it's eight dollars and ninety nine cents. And then we have Black Panther trade paperback volume six. We have Cosmic Ghost Rider. Uh, this is the uh, baby Thanos must die story, where Ghost Rider goes back into time, kind of like a you know, would you kill baby Hitler type of scenario. And, this is uh, a after baby Thanos. This is the one that it's the mini series, right? Right, right. It's mini. It's like five issues, I believe. Yeah. Oh, okay. Time. Written by Donnie Cates, who yeah, will be at Torpedo Comics on February 2nd. This is 42% off. Man, that guy's about to blow up. You better get him for an interview. Just saying. Because when that God Country movie comes out, shit, ain't no, he ain't yeah. going to have time. He's going to make that Hollywood movie money. Yeah, Homeboy's already blowing up, man. His Venom run's blowing up. This, this is Cosmic Ghost Rider. Yeah, but, but, but there's a difference between blowing up in comics and blowing up Hollywood, right? Those guys tend to disappear. Yeah, no, I hear all right, and then we have Daredevil Back in Black, Volume 8, trade paperback. It's a Charles Soule run. Daredevil. Yeah, this is the end of the Charles Soule run. Hoping they'll collect that in some kind of oversized hardcover to match all the other Daredevils that I have. So. Yeah, this is the only Daredevil run I, I haven't read any of, just because this is the only one that came out when I was hardcore into just strictly like trade paperbacks, hardcovers kind of stuff. But Charles Soule is a... Super nice guy. Really smart. He's a great writer. The guy used to write like 50, 50 books a month, it felt like. All right. And then one of Omar's favorite uh, crossover events. Here we have Extermination Trade Paperback. <laughs> I, I dug it. I dug Extermination. I mean, for what it was, it was fun. 
doesn't uh, make Marvel. a damn lick of sense if you're trying to write, draw out the to- t- cable timeline. But hey, what the fuck? Comic book science. I don't care. Yeah, and, yeah time travel, too. That always, always fucks shit up. And then uh, uh, Marvel 2 in 1, uh, Volume 2, Next to Kin. I love this story. This is such a good book. Um, is, this is, is this the return of the Fantastic Four or kind of foreshadowing the return of the Fantastic Four, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You got that correct. Marvel 2 in and 1. And then Marvel 2 in 1. And then next up, we have Abbott Landing's uh, New Mutants collection, Volume 1. This is a complete collection. Yeah, this is uh, 50% off. This is a continuation of the Zeb Wells uh, collection. So this takes place right afterwards. So 50% off at Instock Trades, making it $17.49. Um, I dug this run. It had a crossover with Journey. Into, yeah, there it is, Journey into Mystery. So the remaining of the New Mutants stuff, I guess this would be considered Volume 3 New Mutants. Not bad, but, you know. Yeah. All things must come to an end. You better get your new fix now, since we're not going to get a movie. Hulu will get it. No worries. We'll see about that. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> and then uh, Unbeatable Squirrel Girl, Volume 4. That's all Long Jess, Long. right? Isn't that what Jess gets? Unbeatable Squirrel Girl? How does she... No, I think... Get... I don't. Maybe... How does she get an oversized hardcover? And I can't... You know what? No. Not even going to go there. <laughs> not even I don't know if Jess gets this or not, but I know Jess is a big fan of Spider or not Spider Gwen. Spider Gwen. Uh, Gwenpool. Maybe that's he likes yeah. Spider Gwen and Gwenpool, I think. All oh. right. We're all uh, moving on to what is Boom, Boom Studio? We got a boy at Booms. Yeah. So uh Nuclear Winter original graphic novel. I have no idea what that is. It's based on a cartoon or something. Yeah, the chat, I remember the chat was talking about Sons of Anarchy one day, how good the comic is. I have never heard any anything about it what is the legacy edition though seems pretty high for a trade paperback what does this collect one through 12. okay so it's a thick trade paperback uh this will be 30 percent off at in stock trades that's that's their standard i think boom if i remember discount. Mm-hmm. i think if i remember correctly this takes place between like seasons two and three of the show oh okay when characters like are still alive yeah, I think it takes place after that really terrible season when they were in Ireland. I think. <laughs> I don't really hate on that. I didn't read it. Oh, that Ireland, that Ireland season was was whack. Uh, here's a good well, question whatever. for you while you're reading, Gabe. Do you ever have CGC yeah. present to certify signatures at your in-store signings? Knock out two um, birds with one stone. Why don't, do you ever? You guys ever do that? Well, we we are we are all of us, including myself, are CGC certified. So CGC doesn't have to be there, but we're all CGC witnesses. So, yep. Whenever these signings happen, people get their books signed. Uh, where we witness the paperwork, we witness the signatures. People send it in, and it comes back with that uh, illustrious gold label on their CGC. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Sometimes uh, CGC themselves show up, but not really because we we. We don't need their help. Like we can handle the paperwork on our own and stuff. Yeah. Uh, right now, I'm going to play the role of Jess and remind everybody that is watching and enjoying the show. Please don't forget to hit that like button. Thank you, yeah. Jess. Would appreciate up. it. We appreciate it. All right, and then here's all the other stuff that you're more in tune with than anybody else. Really. <laughs> I'm more in tune with. I think Riley and Geo are the guys you're thinking about. Um, well, the they're not. They're never school. on this show, so. I need your help to point out anything that might be useful. Well, there's a lot of independent comics in here for one thing. Like uh, Collected Tuppy, that's a that's a new print. Oh no, shit, that's a new one. Can you click on that? The yeah. line for on the top left. That's a new one. This guy's art is amazing, and of course they show you a video and not the artwork. I love this guy's it's stuff. Loading up. Presenting the first in a seven volume library of works by the master Sergio Tuppi. Yeah. Ah. Oh. I may have to break down and get this. Let me see what they have it on sale for. What is the name of the... Is it just called The Collected Topi? Yeah, The Collected Topi. Mm, let's see what they have here. It is 30% off at in-stock trade, $17.49. This guy's art is just surreal and beautiful. Yeah, it looks good. Seven volumes, so it looks a little man. Bill That's... Phillips and Kevages on this like elf or whatever this this thing is here. Sitting on the <laughs> I was thinking more of uh, Terry Gilliam and Monty Python stuff. <laughs> uh, 
Um, let's see, delinquent housewife. I have no idea what that is. Uh, high school prodigies. Oh, Jughead the Hunger. That's that's a fun series. Jughead, like Jughead. Jughead, Jughead from Archie. Is, Archie. It's right up there with like uh, life, life and death of Archie, but it's mm -hmm. Jughead as a werewolf. Oh, okay. Interesting. There's a lot of a lot of a book called Monica. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that, that is. is. New Life looks interesting. It's one of the book. Uh, things like that are books I usually try out when I'm <laughs> rounding out my order for fifty dollars for free shipping. <laughs> <laughs> uh, new wow. Exmo Man of War volume uh, volume six. Hey, what? Um, and then when you're done with that, click on that Wildcats. I'm curious to know what that is. It's not the good Wildcats. It's not the oh, it's not. Wildcats. It's not Wild Wild C dot A dot T. Covert Gosh. action teams? No, that's Covert not. Covert action teams. Uh, that XO Man Award will be thirty percent off at Instock Trade. So, you know, it's kind of a slow week. I'll be picking up Nightwing for sure. Nightwing Volume Three Rebirth Edition. In well, on the fence about Battle Pug. Come Pugdium. Uh, I've heard. Some actually, some I did a video on my channel. Somebody commented saying that it was it was good, so I may check it out. May check it out. Uh, I got man, honestly, I, I've looked through just this is just based off of uh, the Marvel's Masterworks website. There's really nothing that's a must get for me until I think like the first or second week of March. Really, so, yeah. I've got I've got something I'm getting every week, just about. But you know, trade paper. I also collect trade paperbacks and things like that, not just sure, sure. Omnis and hardcovers. But that is it. Yeah. You want to... Let's... All right, all done with that, bro. Well done, well done, and in a timely manner. Okay. Wasn't much to talk about this week. <laughs> eh, you know. He... I didn't know what you were getting. I was curious to see what, if anything, so slow, slow month. What have you read this yeah. this week? Have you read uh, anything this week? No, honestly, not this week at all. No, I've had a lot of just stuff come up. Like usually Mondays is my day off, and I could I could get a lot of reading done. But my wife was off of work. My kids are out of school as well. So we did a lot of family stuff today, which really didn't give me enough time to to read. So. Okay, gotcha. Uh, I've done quite a bit of reading. I started on that Conan Omnibus I got on um, Saturday, and I started reading it Sunday, yesterday. But then I had to stop because I forgot that we have uh, old reader, new readers, and we're doing the Thor, God of Thunder, uh, Jason Aaron run. So it's the first the first two hardcovers or the first four trade paperbacks. It's issues 1 through 25. Nice. That's what, we're, that's what we're, I'm rereading. So. God, I really wish they would put out a freaking omnibus of, of his run already. Oh, you know, you know, you know, it's coming. They're gonna wait until he finishes his run and they cash it. Yeah, they, ca they cash in on all the other hardcovers that they they released. You well, know same thing coming. with uh, Dan Slott. I was hoping they would they would do a start like a Spider Man omnibus run on him by now. I, you know, honestly, the one I'm surprised they never did was the Superior Spider Man omnis. I held on <sighs> to those. I held off on buying those hardcovers until I was like, is it coming? Is it coming? No, I guess. Well, I, th I think most of them out of print too. Like there's one or two of them I think are out of print, but I, I, I'm half tempted to chase them down. Just I love that series. It's such a good series, especially with all the, you know, the weird negative knee jerk reaction that it started. But yeah, I might try to chase it down, but I have a feeling an omnibus is going to come out. But I think if you, map out the omnibus and, and superior spider-man won't be until like the second maybe third omnibus I oh it, it won't be anymore, but it won't be for a while well it depends on when they start right do they start a brand right. new day or do they start at the dawn slot run like it, it's gonna be insane but yeah the brand new day is it like when they were doing like the uh, the brain trust is it like did they start with big time you know right I mean, I the, hope they start with big time That'd if they start with big time it wouldn't be that bad but if they start with brand new day holy shit you're talking about 12 Omnis. Conan! <laughs> like, almost a dedication like you would to buying Conan Omnis. Yeah, I know, man. Because there's going to be about 10 of those, of just the Barbarian, and probably 12, or I'm sorry, 8 or 9 of Savage, sort of, Conan. But, you know, if you're in it for the long haul, good for you. Uh, Omar, do you recommend starting the Marvel Conan Omnibus or the Dark Horse Omni? I guess it depends on your taste. If you like um, old school uh, comic book telling stories, then definitely go for the Marvel stuff. I appreciate the art. And I I like Roy Thomas. He was uh, one of my favorite writers on Avengers. So I'm 
it's it, to me it's fun. It's just re I mean, honestly, they're all. This is what Jess and I and Gabe uh, were talking about last Monday. A lot of these are just retellings of the same stories. I mean, the you know, based on his novels, Robert E. Howard's novels, uh, because Marvel already did that um, Kurt Busiek uh, comic that the that his book was based on. But I guess it depends on what kind of storytelling you like. Either one, and if you have a hard time finding the Colossal Conan, remember that Marvel's pumping out those epic trades with their uh, Dark Horse collections, starting this month, actually. Yeah, Dark Horse is getting the shaft on that stuff. <laughs> hey, they, they, they made their money off of it, I'm sure. They they milked that cow until it was gone, brother. Or uh, Omar also does a question here. Uh, did you see, or are you going to see the new Dragon Ball Z <laughs> rally movie? Damn, I was out of town. First of all, congratulations. Because this is amazing. This movie is the top, like it's the third top movie in America. That that's saying something because it's not just it's not that it's just an anime, but it's an it's a movie. It's like I guess if you're counting all the movies, maybe like the 16th or 17th movie of the series. On top of that, it's from a series that has been re resurrected, no pun intended. DBZ, you know, it became super and now super's off the air. Maybe this is the way, F. <laughs> you know, maybe this is the way people are getting their kicks. Like they're like, oh man, we missed Dragon Ball Z. I'm going to go see the movie. I can't believe it in number three. Like that's crazy. It is so, crazy because everybody I know who've seen it, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, but they said their theaters were all super packed out. Like it was so, yeah, they, they made, they made events everywhere. So that's, mm -hmm. that's dope. I haven't seen it either because I was out of town and I just had way too much. And honestly, I had forgotten about it. I, I need to uh, do reminders for myself to do, to go to these events. Yeah. Cause they're a lot of fun. You go in there with, you know, with your people, you go in there with the people that enjoy these movies just as much as you do. So it, it's cool. Also it's, 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 it's it's exciting and and kind of a spectacular thing to see because it's also a movie where you 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 can't just go in there. I'm assuming you can't just go in there without being caught up with Dragon Ball Super. So you, there almost is like a prerequisite to to seeing the movie, I would think, as well. Which is one reason I haven't seen it yet because I have seen zero episodes of Super because I'm waiting for him to get dubbed. Oh, okay. I know some of them yeah. are dubbed already. I think, but I'm kind of waiting for. Yeah, the yeah, they're 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 going through them. Yeah. Have you checked out the new Conan book, the Jason Aaron book? Uh, I have the issues, but I haven't read them. Read them I've got yet, I've got the first issue. I haven't read it yet. And I'm wondering yeah. how well that sucks up. I've heard good things about it. So yeah, me too. I, I've heard I, I mean, after things, reading, though. honestly, after reading Thor, like rereading Thor, I'm like, of course, of course, the obvious choice is Jason Aaron to write. Well, well I mean, Jason Aaron is one of those guys that like I'll read almost anything he's going to put out. I have a lot of faith in that guy's work. Yeah. And also with Dragon Ball Z, it's weird because I remember when Dragon Ball Z was just kind of like a, when I was first catching on to it, you kind of, it was almost like a secret club. Like you had to know a special knock or you had to like, you know, draw a special symbol on the floor in front of somebody for them to realize that you're a Dragon Ball Z fan. And you kind of, you kind of got not made fun of it, but it was kind of just like, oh, whatever. But now it's like, you know, number three movie in, the, in in America or whatnot. So it's crazy. Well, it's cool. It's got a lot, you know, nostalgia driving that, yeah. which is good. Well, uh, that, so and I think uh, Dragon Ball Z Kai, I think that helped out a lot. When that came out, I think that, that made a, that created a lot more new fans that were brought into it. Um, Cause that was like, you know, when that was coming on, like what was it? Toonami at the time or whatever. I think yeah. that really created a new fan base. So Jose is saying something important in the chat. Because we kind of browsed through it, except we didn't know what it was. So Felipe Jose is saying Monica is the most famous Brazilian comic book. Monica and Friends is like Brazilian Archie comics. See, I didn't know that. That's kind of cool. That makes me kind of want to check it out. That that's awesome. Because I love when other countries have this popular character that we don't hear about here in America, right? Yeah, Whereas I mean, because we're we're so like you know uh, just focused in on on just what's kind of a, the Americanized of of everything too. So. And it's 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 also one of those things where I bet reading that will kind of get you a nice kind of look at the culture that's in Brazil too as well. So yeah, well, when you go places, you know, like when you, when you travel places, you always see American comics everywhere. You mm -hmm. you always see a vendors, you always see or whatever they end up calling them, like Pat Patrulla X and Los what the hell they call Revengedores. But anyway, I or so manga. I always find it I always find it interesting that we have like here in America small like demand for these foreign comics, right? It, it's like a small market. 
we don't have it like like humanoids and places like that. Dark Horse is starting to do a good job of bringing stuff over, and it, it's always been there. It, but I feel like not a lot of comic book collectors give a lot of those comics a, a shot, basically because they don't like the way that they're written. Actually, Jess and I have an upcoming episode on his channel talking about European books and humanoids as a whole. Oh yeah, but I think it's also that. because America is such a melting pot that you you know people come over to this country and they bring some of that with them, perhaps, or at least the you know the fans, the fan base, or even just you know the people who are just enjoy those comics, and then you know now's the time to kind of you know supplement that as well. Um. Rick Nelson, do I think Marvel is going to start the JMS on Omni and work their way up? Uh, wishful thinking? Yeah, I would love that. I'd love for them to, to do everything in Spider-Man. Spider-Man, you know, it's it's up there in one of my favorite characters that I collect all the, the Omnis just about. He's like X-Men. Not quite like X-Men to me, but he's up there. But man, we're talking once again, dedication. And it would and Marvel is pretty smart about they've they've kind of figured out the market now, right? They know that a volume three doesn't sell as well as a volume one, so they have to rename it something. So they would go from JMS volume one and two to big time to uh, brand new day, whatever they have to call it, they'll rename it, which of course makes the mapping com complicated, which is why I like doing the comprehensive reading orders on my channel because that shit is confusing if you go to a comic book store or try to find a volume one because there's like 10 volume ones of one thing. Is it the same thing with the uh, X Force omnibuses? It's it's X Force, and then it's Deadpool in the X Force, and the third one is what Cable? Cable in the X Force? <laughs> right. So, well, I mean, obviously they're cashing on on Deadpool, right? For the X Force Volume Two, they right. call it Deadpool and X Force. Uh, the next one is called Cable and and X Force, but we all know it's X Force Volume Three. Yeah. So Jock in the in the chat is saying that uh in stock trades is out of stock of black hammer did you get the library edition that big library book yeah boss but remember they uh they were out of stock at f for a little while i think it's it'll, it will come back in it, into print i don't think it's out of print it's not it's, out of print because no, they they had ran out at one time and then they brought it back which is when i bought the second batch it's still orderable through Diamond, so I'm not yeah. sure. But either way, I, I haven't picked it up yet. I have one on order through the store when Jess and everybody was doing their picks of the year. Um, they, they kept talking about Black Hammer, Black Hammer, Black Hammer. I was like, these fuckers. Then they, they super did, baited me, and I ordered the you, copy. Did you unhighlight yourself, by the way? Because people are saying they can't see me. I like how it took uh, them like a few seconds to say they can't see you, but it took them like five minutes uh, for them to tell you that they can't see me. Well, they know. They know who's, who's got they know the, who the good-looking guy is, apparently. Yeah. It's Gabe, the babe. Um, are we ever going to get a Green Lantern Corp omnibus? Oh, Mike, I ask. I When I see Peter Tomasi at, at, at shows, I ask him. I will say that if you look on eBay from time to time, you may or may not find a beautiful illegal copy floating around of Green Lantern Corps Omnis. People have bought, people have shared them in the group, and I myself may have purchased one and can really vouch for the beautiful work, whoever the hell this author X is that do these Omnis from time to time that mysteriously appear and disappear from eBay. But if you ever find it on eBay and you really like that story, buy it. <laughs> Seriously, it's 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 beautiful work, whoever the hell these people are that did this. Like, I don't but know. Do you think we're ever going to get a legit one? I, I don't know, man. I think it's too late. I think it's too yeah. late. The story, the, the time has come and passed for that story. Unless they kind of work it into the Jeff John stuff where you're you're made to buy one Omni by following the other one. Yeah, I don't. But I don't see them doing that. DC isn't smart enough to map that out. No, I'm sorry. That's kind of that's harsh. It's not that they're not smart enough. It's just that they just don't care. It seems like they don't. They they're really don't moving care about forward. That. You know, they're just trying to stick with the now. I don't because that the uh, that run is really just right after, right before the New Fifty Two and the Flashpoint stuff, really. So I think all that pre New Fifty Two stuff. Is just going to get buried and forgotten for the most part. I don't think we're going to get too much more material from that that time frame. That isn't, you know, the evergreen like 
must read stuff like, you know, Jeff John Lewis Green Lantern or something like that. You know, I think that's the kind of stuff they'll keep in print. But anything else from that time frame, I think we're we're SOL on. I mean, yeah. and then, you know, the best stuff ever, you know, like Nightwing or no, not Nightwing, I'm sorry, Nightfall. Since they just pumped out three omnibuses of that. They know what's up. Yeah, we can complain. I mean, the DC is the company that was about to print start printing the JSA, the Jeff Johns JSA Omnis without the first five issues because they weren't written by Jeff Johns. I mean that that's how ridiculous this company collect the collected editions that this company is. So who knows? And then they also tell you like, oh, here's something that might be that you would all want and you would all love, or at least there's a small sector of you who would like Impulse. That's from the pre New Fifty Two era, and then they cancel it and turn it into a trade paperback. Uh, Gabe, here's a good question for you. So I will let you answer that. It's from Real Slim Shady. Legit uh, question. Yeah, I've we answered this question like over and over before. Uh, Gabe, they, why do you like serial killers so much that you don't want Punisher to go after him? You said that there would be no story, then make it limited. Elsewhere, I'm just sick of him targeting the same old. Yeah, we we've talked about this before, Slim Shady, actually on the show. But I I think my my take on it was something like serial killers you kill it and it's it's over and that's done but crime in itself is never over and evil is never over but there is a book out there um if you're interested in him going after a serial killer it's punisher uh i have it here actually little little white lies little liars something like that i actually have it right here i can go get it but there is a book out there where he does go after a serial killer so you might want to check that it's a single issue one shot book written by David Lapham. So you know it'll be really good. It's got a did uh stray bullets, right? Like yeah, David right. Lapham. Yeah. Um he ha you know he has a tendency to write a lot about serial killers and just bad thing like realistically bad things in in crime. Like that's what his City of Crime storyline was about in Detective Comics. So it's pretty interesting that he brings a lot of realism or a lot, a lot of the real I evil into comic books. Yeah, which, so I was totally get... wrong. It's called Punisher Max Tiny Ugly World. I wonder if this has been if this is printed in in any of the Max omnibuses or not. I'm not sure. But yeah, uh, Tiny Ugly World. That's one where he goes after a serial killer who keeps his dick in a jar. Of course. I mean, what, yeah. I don't take my serial killers seriously unless they keep some kind of body part in a jar. Exactly. I mean, there's just no fun, right? Um, All right, Omar. So, uh, what do we got here? We got a few minutes. Uh, do you want to keep doing Q and A? Do you want to go through your haul real quick or anything? I, I didn't haul much. All I got was the Conan book and the BPRD Volume Four. That's it. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm I'm having fun uh, answering questions for just a few more minutes. Cool. I promised my daughter and my wife we would go and watch Inception. So, pretty excited about that. Do you ever? Did you were you a fan of Inception? Uh, that's the uh, Leonardo like, DiCaprio movie, right? Well, yeah, but it's uh, what's his name, the uh, Nolan. Right? Yeah, yeah, I, so. I I like that movie a lot. I've I've only seen it all the way through from beginning to end once. I think that was when I first saw it in theaters. Right. Because every other time I watch that movie, I fall asleep because the movie <laughs> about people falling asleep. I'm like, you know what? That's I just, it's a good I idea. always every time I don't know what it is. It's just like when people yawn and I yawn. It just makes it's the whole movie about people falling asleep. I just end up falling asleep myself. It's pretty interesting. The um, a friend of mine sent me a copy of the script because um, what's it? Yeah, and the script. The ending of the script, if you have ever seen the original with questions, the ending uh, is a little bit different. So it's interesting how it's supposed to really end as opposed to what the final product was. But it's just you know it's a. It's a Nolan movie, so you got to ignore all the giant plot holes and just have fun with it. <laughs> try, try to tell my kid. So how was it supposed to end? Uh, well, I don't want to ruin it for anybody who hasn't seen it, even though the movie's about ten years. Jesus, about ten years old now. Is remember the 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 trick is the top right spinning. Right. Uh -huh. Is to see if he's caught in a dream or if he's caught in reality. You know, if it wobbles a little bit, then it's not a dream; it's real. So the ending is the shot of the top spinning. Right. And you're left to one, like you know. Does it wobble? I don't want to give away if it wobbles or not in the movie, but the script was different, so it's pretty interesting. Um, 
Is there any call? Oh, yes. Cycle Cleveland, ask a question. You're here. Rams or Patriots? Rams, because that's who Jess likes, and he would be upset if I went with the Patriots. I don't care. <laughs> well, yeah, the correct answer is I don't care, but <laughs> I care about Jess. So if it makes him happy and you know keeps him from having a stroke, then yes, I vote for the Rams. Um, what's up, guys? Do you think DC will continue to print the Golden Age Omnibus line into the Silver Age and Bronze Age era, like Superman and Batman. I think so. I think they've been selling really good. Somebody earlier was asking if they were going to reprint the Superman Golden Age, which I had no... I don't collect those Golden and Silver Age Omnis, so I, I didn't even know it was out of print. That kind of sucks, because that's the beginning of the DC Universe. I hope they keep, they keep it out, because there is people out there that just and there's other folks who are collecting all that stuff. Cycle Cleveland. That's kind of stuff that like it's hard to find any other way that without it being super expensive. Psycho Cleveland, is your wife gonna eat all those hard boiled eggs? I hope so, because I remember that episode. What trail why trailers do you what trailers do you think we'll expect during the Super Bowl? Um not new mutants. <laughs> dick. Probably <laughs> X-Men. Maybe X Men, uh, probably another Far From Home trailer. Pro definitely an Avengers trailer. But what's cool about the you heard about this right, Gabe? That they're only showing the trailers only going to show the first twenty five minutes of the movie, and that's it. They're not going to show anything past twenty five minute mark, which is awesome. I wish all, tra yes, I wish all trailers followed that rule. And that's great. I hate when you trailers know, too much. You know, there's going to be so that means just the rest of that movie is just pure pure spoilers. Right. Which is just I mean, pure amazing, just stuff that we all are, you know, that's where all the answers that we want are going to come out of. So, yeah. I'm happy with that decision. I hope a lot of, I hope, I really hope a lot of other trailers follow suit because yeah. I think it's smart. I don't watch it. I don't watch trailers too often. I try to avoid them uh, just because I don't want anything spoiled for me. And a lot of times you see stuff in the trailer that isn't in the movies, anyways. So, I mean, I don't, you, can, you don't, you don't need to sell me on Endgame. Like you sold me on Endgame. Oh yeah, they know uh, everybody's going. Probably when Avengers One came out and Thanos shows up at the very end, you know, like I was going to see absolutely everything that came out. <laughs> so no biggie there. You, you, that ticket's already bought and sold, man. So, um, let's see. Michael Lombardo is asking if we've checked out the new Criminal ongoing series by Brubaker. I haven't. Um, I'm waiting for some kind of collection. I'm a huge fan of Criminal, and I'm glad it's back. Kind of wish he had gone back and finished. Maybe after this, he can go back and finish. Uh, what's his other series? He never finished. Killer be killed. Is that what it's called? I thought that was finished. Oh no, no, no that's still ongoing. Incognito, the the one about the the superheroes, oh. right? Is that what it was called? God, he's got something. Yeah, there is. I know he did a book called Incognito, but I don't know if that was not completed or not. Yeah, Incognito, it wasn't completed. Lionheart's right. They do need to do a new mutants on the bus. Yes. They freaking do. We've been waiting a long time for that. There's a lot of omnibuses they need to do, but you know they don't invite us to any of these meetings to, to let them know what needs to be put out or not. No, but I mean, obviously these co these meetings happen because somebody decides, hey, let's reprint Spider-Man Volume 1. Speaking of meetings and omnis, uh, Brooks, I don't know if you're still in chat, but thanks for letting everybody know about the one of the one of the revelations with there's a Lucifer omnibus coming out, right? I think you guys talked about it bef before. And as awesome as that is, I was really hoping for a Hellblazer omnibus announcement. Where the hell is that? I would love a complete Hellblazer run on in my on my shelf. Maybe they're just avoiding it. Three hundred issues. Too long. Maybe you're avoiding it because it'd be too long. I mean, why are they worried about that? They know people will buy it. You don't need to print them that much. But anyway, maybe we should do a list, kind of like what Riley does. Like yeah. Your most wanted DC or Marvel Omnis. I would I would love to do that, to talk about why. But we share a lot of those in common, but, you know, I still like to know. Oh, it's cool to see, like, uh, yeah, we share a lot of common. I'm sure we also have our own personal favorites that, you know, we wish would be made into an omnibus that other people probably didn't think of or isn't, you know, the top of their list. Like, I still want the Thunderbolts omnibus, but I don't know if that's ever going to happen. Yeah, you never know. 
you know, we used to think these movies. Um, I don't even think the movies well, in the, in the, into well, account on these scenes coming out. We used to, we, we used to think that. And, and yeah. to an extent, they still kind of do. Oh, man. No Man's Land omnibus. Hell yes. Dude, I'll take a contagion in a legacy omnibus. I'll, Batman, he's got this huge, like, so many trade paperbacks that are out of print. The, and it's a confusing reading order. He would benefit from an omnibus format. And people are, you know, more and more people that are collecting these books are starting to get more and more into thicker, more expensive books. If anything, that or, or just release their, what is it, is it the DC Essentials is what they're starting to come out with? They're kind of like the Marvel Epic stuff. But Yeah, yeah, I think, that's, I, think I know what you're talking about. I think that's, that's what it's called. Yeah, because they're doing an essential uh, hush pretty soon and stuff. Philip Evans is right, though. So, like, Hellblazer 1 and 8, 1 through 8, and then it would take forever, and they would cancel it after 5 because the hell with the fans. You are completely no, right. No, exactly. No, because that's it. You, the person who buys one will have to stick around and buy every single one of us for that thing that still be, like, profitable for them. Well, no one's going to come in and be like, oh, Hellblazer, Omnibus Volume 35. Oh, I'm going to start there. That's awesome. Well, no, what you do is you're all go out you separate, you know, you, you separate <laughs> it like, you know, you do it like the epics. You put the number in the back. You don't put it on the spine and you separate it by the writers. You've got, you know, the, the, the Grant Morrison stuff, the Paul Jenkins, Mike Carey, and you call it whatever loose. Oh, I'm sorry, not Lucifer. Um, hellblazer omnibus by the name of the author that's how you do it yeah you put you start putting that number on the back so you can stop complaining about people and not put them picking. out of order like they do the epic collections oh my god fuck that gets confusing <laughs> as hell anyway <laughs> <laughs> uh, i do want an x factor omnibus as well both the original x factor and uh peter the, david uh, peter david uh what was it called yeah x factor investigations right so yeah no, no, Exiles. Uh, there, there's so many good runs they could do. Um, or just start reprinting some of the stuff that's really expensive that nobody can get their hands on, like, you know, Bendis' Daredevil or stuff like that. Yeah. All right, man. Well, that's all the time I've got if you want to start signing us off. Yeah. All got... right, everybody. So it's been an hour. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we appreciate your time listening and watching this awesome show has been brought to you by the one the only instocktrade.com where you can find all the omnibuses and hardcovers and collect editions that we spoke about today and any other omnibus that is still in print over at instock trades 50 dollars or more will get you free shipping uh discounts are ranging from normally 35 to 50 percent off all these books great customer service through emily and the best packing and shipping around that's instocktrades.com we love them and we love all of you as well except you and you you're okay not you i love you're everybody right. so it's all good uh yes thank you everybody for joining us and tune in on thursday right that's the next show thursday on this channel thursday on this channel will be the topic is uh top whales so we'll be talking about whales and out of print books if i come back in early i will be happy to join you guys uh if not you can catch me on my channel we have a live show tomorrow at eight o'clock eastern standard time called old reader new reader where we'll we'll be talking about jason aaron's thor god of thunder so join us live or don't join us live join us join us after you read it or whatever but it'd be good to have uh the more the merrier so in game where can people find you YouTube and Instagram, Gabe Infinity Watch. And I'm also in the Omnibus Collectors Facebook group as well. And thank you very much, everybody. Me and Omar are out of here. And we hope you guys enjoy the rest of your nights. And I hope you join us on Thursday for that cool topic. All right. Good night, everybody. Laters.